So thank you. So now we can talk about your interview experience, like the number of rounds and the focus of each and every round. And as you have mentioned that there were uh, 25 students shortlisted for the interview and some of the students were waitlisted for the interview as well. So if you could tell us a bit about your interview experience, like the number of rounds and everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so as I already mentioned, I was in the waitlist and uh, there were many people in the waitlist around uh, the list that came out, it contained 50 people in the waitlist, but uh, as the day progressed, it uh, would have uh, you know, grown smaller and I finally gave a, um, got a chance to get the interview. So, uh, interview, there were two rounds. First two was, I think they were just, you know, uh, what do you would say, screening the people based on, uh, it was uh, basically, they were asking technical puzzles, you could, if you could say. So that they were asking, it was very short, around 10-15 uh, minutes round. They were asking four, five, you know, uh, uh, technical uh, puzzles uh, that uh, you could answer on the spot kind of thing, or will take two, three minutes to solve. So those were the kind of uh, things that uh, uh, were asked in round one. And uh, then those who cleared that, I think uh, around 10, 12 people cleared that for including both chaps or Maybe less toward my there. So I think 12 and 12 people cleared that round, and uh, then there was round two. And uh, in that round two, uh, uh, initially they started with. Uh, uh, I was asked again few technical questions. Uh, again, the the nature was that uh, uh, was asked in round one, sort of that, and uh, then. Uh, they began to question me on my resume and uh, my project work and the relevance to Sedemac and all. Yes, God. So, so, okay, so there were two rounds mainly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And, and you mentioned that the first round was technical puzzle round. Yeah, if so you could how, say a technical puzzle. Yes. So how were that round conducted? Means they were uh, giving you some question or some problem verbally and you have to come with an answer or they were showing something on the screen? Uh, a few of them were, uh, they were communicating verbally, uh, if it required a diagram, they were also presenting. Okay, on the screen. Yeah. Yes. Miss, so can you please give some example, like uh, some technical puzzle means as in what, like an example, if you could tell, means something around that example, even if you don't want to reveal that that example, we can talk like some similar thing. Okay. Uh, so technical puzzle, what I can say, so the one that was uh, strictly to my domain electrical was uh, i think it was an rc circuit uh, some combination of r and c and we were asked to you know what would be the steady state uh, charge or current okay. at some that kind of thing so you could do that and uh, one was uh, about uh, some there was motor and uh, i think it had, it had freewheeling disc that we have and uh, some inertia was given and I was uh, asked to tell his steady state speed, something of that sort. Uh, we used to have, I think, you can relate it to the swing equation that we have. Okay. So, yeah, it was something around that. Okay. And one, two question would be like, I would say that in aptitude section two, but uh, say uh, one question was uh, divisibility rule of three, right? Okay. So what is it that the digits should add up to a number that is divisible by three? Yes. So how do you prove it? Okay. Yeah, that was the question. So they were basically checking the aptitude and the reasoning behind the first principles. Checking again the first principle that there. Yeah, so these were the kind of questions. Yeah, it seems interesting. <laughs> it seems really interesting. So, so Miss, uh, they were uh, showing or uh, or uh, stating some question, and then then you were solving that numerically. So, you were using some rough paper to solve those questions, or yeah, yeah, I was using. I was allowed. So, you were allowed to put some rough paper or pen in front of you, and you were solving that question numerically, and then you were giving the answer. Like I came with this answer. Yeah. Um, also, they asked. Uh, uh, what steps are you doing or uh, that kind of thing, the reasoning behind what am I doing? Approach, the approach and yeah. the answer both. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I think like, like you discussed that some aptitude questions were also there. Aptitude we can say, obvious, and then some technical questions were there. And some f five, six questions were asked in this round. Yeah. 
four five question so it might uh, have been to like 30 minutes 40 minutes round no no it was very short it was like just on the, nothing about what are you means uh, introduce yourself or nothing they came these are the questions and uh, they were giving one after another and solve this and then we'll see you in round okay rapid round yeah okay 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 <laughs> yeah it's it, it's really it's unique and interesting yeah. just screening just screening yeah and after this some st uh, some students were shortlisted for the second round yes oh. and in that round uh, in that round they were asking questions some more technical questions and then the questions on your resume yeah it uh, began with uh, more technical questions a bit more detailed than that were in first round one and uh, then we uh, yeah then they began to uh, ask questions on the resume itself Okay, so technical question like you mentioned that uh, you know some advanced technical questions as compared to round one. So yeah. an example based on that, if you could relate like uh, in first round this was and second round this was, if if you can have some analogy for. Okay, so in round one, as I said, uh, there was question on combination of R and C circuit. So yeah. say like two R and one C or two C one R. Uh, in round two, I was asked about an infinite ladder question that we use uh, R and C. Yes. So, uh, something on that was there, and uh, yeah, on that lines. Okay, okay, on that line. So, uh, so again, there were some numerical questions, and you are trying to solve those numerical questions mm -hmm. on some rough sheet or maybe yeah. Yes. Yes, and okay. So, the, uh, so, so there were how many technical questions were there apart from your interview? Interview? Oh, sorry, resume thing. Uh, in round two, how many questions? Yeah, I think two, three. Okay, two, three highly technical questions, and then they switch on to talking about your resume. High in the yeah, high in the sense I'm saying that to compare to the round one, round yeah, not that much high. Uh, we could solve it like uh, kind of get questions, but uh, those kind of things. Okay, one was like uh, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, strictly that was uh, known to me. There was some other kind of I think. Some sampling rate question was also there. If you want to sample and reconstruct a signal, okay, so yeah. So that I don't remember exactly. Uh, we can solve it because we have some technical knowledge about it, and then you can apply aptitude to it and somehow uh, figure out a way. Uh, anyway, they are more interested in knowing your approach than the exact answer. So that is important. Tell them that. I know that much, and that is how I am thinking that it could be solved, even if you don't know the correct answer. Yeah, approach approach really matters in the interview. Yes. yes, and I think since you have written gate in electrical engineering, mm -hmm. so I guess you might be you you definitely have a good hold of concepts. Like in gate electrical engineering, we you have studied about communication signal processing these things you have studied. So uh, no, we didn't have that, but uh, it was. Not not exactly the technical side of sampling, but somewhat related to it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we I don't think we uh, would require some you know communication knowledge for that. Okay. I think I could have solved it. I tried to even, but uh, uh, somehow I don't think it was right. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So I think they were checking mainly the basic concepts and how you know how uh, means whether you are getting the things behind the formula or not. So it's yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, Gorang. So, so Gorang. Uh, so, and um, so in this round, after technical questions were covered, they were now talking about your resume. Yeah. So, what are the questions that were uh, based on your resume? So, um, they firstly asked about it, but uh, a long discussion went on my MTP. So, uh, battery management system it went on. So, uh, what are you doing till now? What have you done? Uh, uh, so there is state of charge in the battery. So a detailed discussion what uh, it is, how do you measure it, what does battery management system do, uh, uh, could you tell the functionalities of all of it and uh, all that things. So uh, uh, as it happens, the interviewer had also worked on that domain, the okay. battery management system. So they inquired in quite a detail about it. So uh, that went on. and. Uh, after that, uh, he asked a uh, bit about my other projects and seminar that I mentioned. Uh, I think uh, 
he asked me about some course seminar that i did for micro grids and all so there were some questions uh, about that as well but uh, mostly it went on my uh, battery management system my uh, tech project that is yes so anything apart from your projects like something on your por or some other questions did they ask in this round no no saturday interview was you know one of its candidates entire placement process was one of its kind so uh, first round as i said the test was different the screening round was different and these two they just strictly stick to this technical parts and all they didn't go for por or what you have done else or whatever it was strictly related to that only Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that way the two rounds got completed, and finally you you received the offer. Yes. Yes. So I guess then we have covered about these two rounds, and uh, you have also explained uh, given some examples, so that would be helpful for the students that they should be, you know, they should have a very sound understanding of the concepts of the basic concepts. They should prepare accordingly for CEDEMAC. And uh, so you know, uh, uh, Goran, in your case, like since you means. you had attempted the test of sedimac and you saw that the questions were really unique then you might be expecting that the interview will also be unique you might be expecting of that sort so did you uh, miss take some extra measures for the interview like how did you prepare for the interview in that case uh actually yes uh, the thought was there in mind that uh, uh, like uh, next day this company is coming and its test was unique so something it isn't going to be the normal one Yeah. but uh, pre- preparing uh, especially i would say i did and think this focused on my mtech projects and resume that's what uh, all i did and that is uh, all you can do actually uh, you can prepare what you know uh, in a better and polished way to present it badly so that is what i did uh, okay yeah yes Okay, so since you have mentioned that uh, they they only ask clinical questions, so I am pretty sure that they they would not have asked any questions on your academic gap. No, no, they didn't. Actually, I got that question in one of the interviews. Okay, other interviews you got that question. No, I didn't. Actually. Okay, uh, okay, you did not get this question in any of the interviews. I don't think it's you. It uh, it isn't a long gap, so I yeah. don't think they notice it that much. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Maybe that is the reason, and it isn't a, uh, even a, you know I didn't even do any kind of job in that year. So yeah, the what do you would say attention didn't go to that part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, Goran. So Goran, uh, then uh, you know uh, we can talk a bit about uh, like uh, this online and offline interview. Miss, though uh, it is something uh, like not related to your your interview, but like uh, since this time we had this placement season entirely in online mode. So, like, what are the key things which one should you know pay attention to while attending any online interview? Do you have any suggestions on this? uh online interview see uh, the whole semester ran ran online so we yeah. quite had trail of how to handle these kind of things uh, we had seminars and presentations so we got better hold of things how to handle it so uh yeah secluded room you have to be there has to be no noise and as it happens uh my you know, at my home there was marriage it was marriage season in december so yeah. i had to go far away and set up a room and all the things so uh, just means you have to be there should be no disturbance actually that is a very key thing uh, during the interview and all it really disturbs the tempo so and uh, regarding you know i couldn't compare it to offline interview because i don't have any much yes. <laughs> yeah. but uh, uh, on the hindsight i do feel somewhat safe in online interview after the whole semester in online so uh, that i could say that uh, i was somewhat more comfortable in online interview after the that semester that yeah. semester yeah. after that yes yeah that semester prepared us and yes. for the interview in fact yes yes garang so i guess then we have covered uh, you know a uh, lot of things which we had planned actually so before we wrap up uh, do you have anything to add anything else you want to add uh placement process is i think covered almost covered and um, uh, regarding to 
the department things and all there uh, i would like to add so uh, what i have seen in my batch is that uh, in the energy engineering and the system engineering we tend to you know look uh, the things that you know the, this is electrical engineering part so they go for electrical engineering and uh, mechanical engineering so uh, uh, we don't uh, really understand that uh, the energy industry in itself is uh, quite large and growing so uh, uh, few big weeks back we had some alumnus talks so they also explained us and uh, you can see from the market that it is going on energy engineering renewables and all this is a uh, very growing field so uh, we rather than looking at it that uh, this is an i am from an electrical background and i should stick to what electrical engineering or you know uh, this happens to us a lot in like choosing the projects and all we don't want to go cross the main or that thing but uh, what now is growing is uh, you know majorly cross domain things that are taking over the industry and all that so we should you know uh, not to uh, restrict ourselves based on our uh, what is our previous specialization or whatever and uh, try to acquire skills whatever interest us and the opportunities are there um, uh, if not uh, even at the campus i would say uh, there are a lot of opportunities outside the campus as well if we are not going uh, uh, placement team and all tries to bring as much as they are but even if we don't uh, if you have the skills you can definitely get a job outside of it so uh, you should we should really focus on the skills that we are building and should have great command at it and that will turn out good as yes yeah. and definitely this will act as an advice to the upcoming mtech yeah, energy science students that they should think from a broad perspective so yeah. that would help them to you know gain some more skills and uh, yeah that would definitely help them yeah goran so then i think we have covered all um, the things which we had planned actually so yeah so thank you very much thank you for taking out time from your schedule and i guess your experience will be helpful for a lot of students i know department and i think several other, other students as well so yeah thank you very much yeah great work buddy thank you will help a lot of people